sure there's there's definitely some anxiety going into uh, this because you do have just kind of one shot to get uh, these musicians' parts. Try it again. Wasn't quite sure how things were going to go with one day of rehearsal and then three days in the studio and we want to get nine tunes done. I approached this with a feeling that things are going to happen the way they're supposed to and it's going to work itself out and I trust my gut. Practicing for a couple months before the record, you know, working on arrangements and writing charts and putting faith in the musicians. That's why you get guys like Daryl Scott, Matt Chamberlain, Victor Krauss, Jason Lenning because these guys are amazing at what they do. I don't know how these songs are going to come out. We've never really played together, the four of us. And here we are, we're about to make a record. Daryl Scott's a guy that I've been playing with for the last maybe five years in different occasions. So he can play just about any instrument you put in his hands. It's really amazing. Was an immense pleasure for me to play with him. He is one of the most soulful guys I know. And I think of him as a musician that just channels from somewhere. Victor Krauss is a monster bass player. He doesn't talk with a loud voice at all. He's, he's a very subtle guy, and his playing is subtle, but his bass playing is so mean at the same time. It's just... And I'm constantly amazed at the uh, melodic ideas that are happening on the bass. It's not just I'm holding down the low end. He's, he's playing little melodies. It's almost like this transparent thing that you almost don't even know what's happening or what's being done to you yet until it's already been done. <laughs> Jason Lenning, the producer and engineer for this record, uh, suggested that we get Matt involved with this. He thought it'd be a, a great fit to the type of music that I was writing. He came from Seattle uh, to play with us and he plays things that you don't expect and is not afraid to uh, go into left field and actually really enjoys the experimentation phase. That was great. Yeah, that's awesome. When I brought all my percussion stuff, he said, leave it in here, I'll probably use it. He really helped shape this record uh, in a really amazing way colors that I didn't imagine and uh, unexpected things. Here it comes. Jason Lenning and I worked on my first record together. I have a lot of ideas about things and how I think they might uh, play out, but I might have not be able to make up my mind. And I know I can always count on him for, you know, I can't choose between A or B. Well, I like B better. All right, B it is then. I know that if he's into something or has an idea, I'm probably going to be into it. It might not have been something that I thought of, but I'm probably going to be into it. And, and, it, and it goes both ways for us. And the chemistry is really good, really easy to work together. I knew the melodies of the tunes. I knew what the melodies were going to be. I had good framework of I think this tune will work like this. We've got to bring an arrangement that's going to be the place that we start from, but knowing that it's going to change based on what anybody starts to play. Uh, I was just really excited to find out what they were going to do. You know, you see it go from uh, the demo stage to fully realized tune. is a pretty amazing experience. He's supposed to be scary enough to scare death away, is what his, his deal is. It's from uh, Lhasa up in Tibet from uh, a trip 
that I was up there a couple years ago. I figured he'd be good to have around the session. There's this technique called fiddlesticks, old Cajun and old time technique. And I've seen a couple guys do it recently. I thought that it could possibly go somewhere else. I asked Matt to play the two fiddles at the same time and uh, well that would kind of create a bed of harmony that the melody, I wrote a melody that would fit over anything that happened on those, any combination of those it would strings. It better if they're straight like that. And that sort of stuff is totally cool. I was doing that, or one with, one on the, one on the strings that rang and one on the, on the uh, behind the bridge or something like that. I'll leave it up to you. I just wanted somebody to kind of wanted to create the harmony and see what the cool. And uh, for each song, we try and find some different texture. To, uh, to play along to. That tune was inspired by listening to a South Indian classical violinist. And seeing him perform solo was kind of a changing experience for me. I don't have those often. So I took a lesson from him and I started working on certain techniques and I was, had a different total palette going on in my head and uh, I, was, I do this practice where I have a drone going and I uh, have a drum loop happening and I'm just kind of playing and this melody started to pop out. And that's one that Daryl played the steel on that I wasn't expecting that really made that tune for me, really. Why did I write that tune? I had a dream and the word quail was written on the board, in the, like a blackboard in the dream, and so I wrote this tune the next morning. I just thought it was very bizarre that it was, that it was in my dream that night, so I called this one the hunt for the quail egg. This record is the culmination of the last two years of my life, where the first record is the culmination of the first 25 years of my life. I've been experiencing music with lots of different people, Daryl Scott for one of them, uh, Tim O'Brien, Bela Fleck, and Abigail Washburn and Ben Lee in this kind of crazy quartet that we have. Traveling, uh, being my own artist, and uh, you know, it's kind of learning more about who I am uh, is translated, I think, within this music, or it must be. I don't know how it couldn't be. You hear the song start as this little thing, and then all of a sudden it's somewhere where you never imagined it to be, and we all kind of got there together.